Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Simic Ramp. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. I want to remind you, before we jump into today's deck, we do have a giveaway going on right now for Battle of Battle 4, excuse me, Baldur's Gate. Uh, if you'd like to pick yourself up a free draft booster box of the set, yes, a draft booster box, full draft booster box, uh, you can do so just by subscribing to the channel. We also can, uh, or you can also enter by following on Twitter, on Instagram, and then joining our Discord. Those are all the free ways. If you're a YouTube YouTube member or a Patreon member, you also get a free bonus entry. Just a heads up. Uh, don't want anybody to feel like they have to spend money on the channel, but if you do, we want to give you guys a little bit more of a thank you. And so for all giveaways, that's kind of the, the structure we do. But all that to say, guys, it's going to be a blast. We're giving away uh, that booster box on June 17th. So do stay tuned for that. We'll have a video up uh, when that goes live. But right now we're playing Simic Ramp, guys. This is one of the most well-made Simic Ramp decks I think I have ever seen uh, for the current standard environment. I cannot take credit for this. MTG Malone, thank you, my friend. You have really put together a blast of a deck here. We're going to have some fun with this one today. Did test it once uh, and very easily won. <laughs> uh, it wasn't even close. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, this deck does everything you want in a ramp deck, which is ramp and play big things. Uh, and what could be better than that than some of these really high-end things? We've got Cyclone Summoner, an old Kaldheim Carbon. I know we're not going to have Kaldheim in standard for much longer, but this, along with Undercover Operative, absolutely phenomenal. You get to play this after attacking with a bunch of stuff, hopefully the previous turn, uh, or previous combat step. Throw this down, it bounces everything back. Hopefully, either an Operative or maybe you have an Operative in hand. Uh, the idea is then on the next turn, you can drop the undercover operative and then copying the Cyclone Summoner and bounce everything back again, and it basically just frustrates the heck out of the opponent. Uh, it's it's hilarious, as it turns out. Um, this also does feature, of course, the Titan of Industry, one of the newer big ramp payoffs. Uh, just does so much for you, and it's an absolute powerhouse card. Uh, we do have Colossal Sky Turtle as well. This is a nice little card. Uh, it can tempo down some stuff. It can also just ramp you. Uh, or excuse me, not ramp you. Wow. Uh, it can also return a card from the graveyard to your hand. Uh, and so if you find yourself getting removed uh, very heavily, maybe you just got a sweeper and you lost your Cyclone Summoner, this allows you to bring it back, which is quite nice. Uh, it does also, of course, work as just a big threat. Uh, we do have Memory Deluge for a little bit of card selection off of the top. We can kind of get some more stuff. It also gives us some later plays with that flashback cost, which is obviously a good way to dump some of this mana. Quandrix Cultivator and Topiary Stomper, both ramp spells on a stick, along with technically the Neverwinter Dryad. We do have Field Trip as well to help us, which does come with the full sideboard. Uh, and then Shigeki, which is also going to help us out quite a bit. Uh, Fading Hope is a little bit of interaction for us, just to be able to efficiently kind of bounce some stuff. It's not necessarily amazing, but it does help us out quite a bit. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much the deck. It's really straightforward, but MTG Malone, again, in my opinion, this seems like a really, really nice deck. I'm really excited to try this one out. Hopefully we can get some wins. I know in the last video we got absolutely none, uh, which happens, but it's okay. We'll jump into the, some games, guys. Hopefully we can get some wins and hopefully have some fun. And again, thank you, MTG Malone. Link down below. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Uh, and let's see what we can do. I think we can definitely keep this. It's a little bit slow, but the Shigeki is probably going to help us out quite a bit here. Um, and hopefully get us to that cultivator a little bit quicker. And then once we've got there, obviously we've got Titan. So uh, hopefully, hopefully this works out to our advantage. It's not a bad play either. I am just going to run uh, Shigeki out here though. Um, I think this is actually weirdly the safer play. So if they have a two mana burns or a two damage burn spell, it really doesn't do anything. But here they would have done that to the Neverwinter Dryad anyway. And so truthfully, it wouldn't have really mattered too much which way we go. This way, at least, what we're able to do is drop this down and then use its ability right away if we need to, which I think we probably will, just to make sure that we've got what we need. Uh, thankfully, they played a correct expressive iteration, uh, playing it before they play their land. I know that's kind of a silly thing, but a lot of people seem to forget that. Uh, Kind of nice to see burn down the house as their big sweeper play because a lot of our stuff actually gets out from under that, which is kind of nice. Um, I am going to go ahead and pop this now. The reason being, uh, we do really want to make sure we're hitting the cultivator on time. So I think this is a little bit more important. Land is also quite nice. 
Let's leave that up, of course, for the Fading Hope. Let's go ahead and search our deck. We will happily take that action. Um, and generally speaking, I like to search up more, if we've got all the, the colors that we need, I like to search up the islands uh, for cards like the Cultivator, and then leave things like the Neverwinter Dryad pulling the forest, because obviously they can only pull the forest. So just some things to think about if you happen to be playing this or testing this deck out as well. Uh, definitely an important piece to that puzzle is making sure you get the order correct. Um, all right, before we do anything, we're just going to attack. We're gonna keep this really simple. We'll see if they have any kind of uh, backup play. It looks like they don't, which is great. Um, that comes into play tapped. So this does not. So in this case, we do kind of want to uh, play this first, get the forest, and then play the topiary stomper, I believe is gonna be the play. Uh, this does open ourselves up for a very devastating burn down the house, which is worth noting, but um, I think I'm kind of okay with it, weirdly. Um, my thing is, we have a Titan of Industry coming down the following turn, so if they spend the turn to burn down the house, uh, it's actually kind of okay. Uh, we'll get that forest, and yeah, I think we'll just do this. We don't technically need to do this. We could wait on the Topiary Stomper, full, fully uh, understand that we don't necessarily have to pull this trigger now, but... This really does set up like either they have a sweeper or they kind of lose. Not right on the spot, but definitely pretty close. Uh, and so it does help out a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so they do have the burn down the house. That was what we were kind of worried about. But at the same time, now we can just drop Titan. And I don't think there's going to be much they can do about it. So let's go ahead and drop this down. Uh, I think the play is Rhino and Shield Counter on the Titan. Um, this again is kind of forcing them into having a couple of extra pieces here. Uh, we also get to leave up the Fading Hope, which we can use to save our Titan of Industry if we so choose. So there is a way around some of this. Uh, we can just bounce this back to our hand and then play it next turn. But we also have the Memory Deluge the upcoming turn. So like, we're kind of kind of well positioned. It's not necessarily perfect, but it's close. Um, I'm curious to see. So they're going to probably burn down the house and maybe big score. I don't know. The uh, the strangle doesn't actually deal with the Titan of Industry uh, along with the burn down the house. So that should be okay. Okay. And then they play a strangle. Uh, I don't think this works the way they think it does, but let's just be safe. Yeah. So we actually still get to keep the the Indus Titan of Industry, but if they have a third spell, they can use it to kill the Titan of Industry. We're going into full control so we can Fading Hope the Titan, though. Perfect. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so now they have to have an instant speed way to deal two damage. Looks like they don't. Uh, it also had to be for one mana, which is pretty awesome. All right. Sick. <laughs> Again, I think the play is pretty straightforward. We just drop the uh, Titan, do this, do this. And chances are they're not going to be able to do the same thing twice. Maybe they can. Again, worst case scenario, though, we have Memory Deluge. So we've got options here uh, to kind of protect things as need be. So I'm just going to see what happens. I think this is definitely the best bet. Um, and then worst case scenario, we run them down on resources quite a bit and then just memory deluge for bigger and badder things. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. I like this deck. I really like this deck. Simic Ramp just always feels so good, especially right now with things like Titan of Industry that are just really good payoffs and kind of tricky to deal with. I mean, we're seeing the opponent having to do like multiple spells just to be able to try and deal with it. And we've got protection spells like Fading Hope that are able to kind of bring stuff back. So, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's certainly pretty good. It looks like here they are going to get to kill our board. Um, but again, they're using so many resources to do this, it seems. Oh, maybe they're not. Maybe they're just going to big score. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know that they did that right. I don't think they did. I think they kind of messed that one up. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, I think they kind of messed that up. Uh, but that's okay. Sure. Oh, they're going to deal 
five. Okay. I mean, that's fine. They have no more mana now, so like, they kill our four four, they leave our seven seven, uh, which is fine by me. All right, let's attack in for seven. I will go ahead and field trip. Uh, I don't think there's a big reason not to field trip here. Uh, I think we just take the summoning or conjuring, excuse me, basic conjuration. Um, and yeah, I think I just go ahead and play it. Hmm. We'll take the sky turtle just because it's a much bigger threat, obviously. Um, is there anything in our graveyard we want to pull back? Not really. So I think we can just wait and play this. The ward cost on this is actually pretty relevant as well, because it just means it's going to be a little bit trickier for them to deal with anything. Uh, here they could Maestro's Charm. Okay, no, they didn't. Thankfully, they just Expressive Iteration twice, which is fine. But I think Law of Diminishing Returns would say that's a little less good than... Um, the first one so what i mean by that is if they pull two lands out in exile that they want to play it doesn't they lose one you know what i mean or yeah they could pull a land in a spell i guess and force themselves to play it i don't know um this seems like a a bit of a desperation move which i'm cool with <laughs> it's fine by me <laughs> um yeah i'm really liking this deck uh mtg malone my man this deck is sick. Uh, all right, well, I mean, step one, easy attack in. Um, we can Colossal Sky Turtle, worth noting, we can Colossal Sky Turtle our own Titan to bring it back to our hands. So in some regards, the Sky Turtle is actually a protection spell. Just something to note. Um, doesn't mean it's the best option, but it is certainly an option. Uh, I think actually what we do is Topiary Stomper and then leave up the Memory Deluge for the card selection. We're kind of at a position where that seems more important than dropping another... This dies to a lot of stuff. Um, what I mean, not everything, but like a, uh, a burn down the house, for instance, would just kill that and the Topiary Stomper, and we're kind of just <clears throat> forcing them to, to be able to deal with the Titan more so than anything else. The Topiary Stomper is more of a red herring, like finish it if you can because it's also lethal, but uh, it's a little less important to us. Um, and the Sky Turtle would most likely die as well in that transaction. So I don't know, we'll see. Basically I'm talking a lot. Basically we're forcing them into a position to deal with everything. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and Memory Deluge here. Put two of them into our hand. I think definitely that. And I guess this. I mean... Uh, let's wait for them to, to do the thing. We're going to kind of force them into how this is going to go. I'm curious. It's going to be interesting. I think the safe play is definitely going to be to Colossal Sky Turtle on the Titan of Industry. So you're going to deal 5 damage to the Titan, which is fine. But they're investing a lot of mana into doing this, which is great. <laughs> okay. Alright, so let's do this. Let's return this. Bounce it. <laughs> so both of those spells basically do nothing now, and they have one mana available to do something. Is this still on the stack, though, or did they already choose that one? I thought they did, but I might be wrong. No, they didn't. Okay. So they can deal with the Topiary Stomper. That's fine. But now we've got Titan of Industry that's going to be a lot harder to deal with. They're also out of Burn Down the Houses. That would have been interesting information. I didn't really look at that, but that's fine. All right. Cool. I mean, they're restocking their hand, which is good for them, but they're pretty close to out of mana here. Um, and so I'm not super worried about what they could get. They basically just replaced a card. Yeah, and then 
immediately lost it, which is fine by me. Let's go ahead and throw Titan out. 4-4, uh, four, four, shield counter. Gonna go ahead and throw the shield counter on the Titan. Um, and I think we just pass, actually. Shigeki can hit for, what, one at the moment, so we could return something to our hand if we need to. Um, turn X target non-legendary cards from your graveyard to your hands. So that could be another Sky Turtle. The crucial thing here is kind of my thought is we just want to leave this up to protect everything because eventually they just burn out. They're also going to deck themselves way sooner than they are to, uh, than we are, excuse me. So cool. Uh, the Sky Turtle also works as a insta win if they do have a creature in their deck so we can just bounce the creature and then titan of industry in so i don't know i feel like this is a a hard fought battle but i feel like we've got this one i hope oh very nice uh yeah i'm just gonna do this Because, again, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> we do take some damage here, and they certainly draw some cards, which is annoying. But, like, they're out of mana again. They draw three, which is, again, closer to decking themselves. <laughs> so, like, kind of okay with it. Oh, we got another Sky Turtle. All right, sick. What a resilient deck. This is fascinating. Like, they have almost killed this Titan of Industry. I don't know how many times. But they haven't. <laughs> Uh, and I'm sure it's very annoying for them, but I like it. <laughs> this is making for a pretty long game, though. We're already at 20 minutes. My goodness. Uh, we may only get two games in. I will try and go for at least two, though. Um, I know we only got one game in for uh, the mono blacklist last week, which was a little annoying, but um, it's all good. All right. So, I mean, we just attack in first. I don't think there's a big reason not to. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> here we go again. Um, okay. I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, they're really hi hanging on by a thread here. <laughs> um, Just gonna force the issue once again. Um, I'm gonna put the shield counter here uh, just in case because it is the untapped one. So, like, now they're gonna have to get through two shield counters to be able to deal with this. Um, if they have a burn down the house, that would be pretty good, but we can still kind of deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is a hard-fought battle, though. I, can I just say, well done, opponent, for, like, working so hard on this one. Because if they do win, it's going to be amazing. If we win, it'll be, I think, great. But, like, more importantly, I think kudos to Harvest Requiem for, like, really sticking in there and pushing through this. Because this is awesome. Um, they have made they have made this such a good game. Like, we're just doing the basic stuff here. They're, they're doing some awesome stuff but unfortunately we won it heck yeah harvest requiem requiem thank you so much for that game though that was an absolute pleasure let's jump into a game too what's up guys before we jump into the next game i just want to remind you if you would like to pick up this month's patreon rewards feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves all right guys here we are for game number two and yeah i mean we keep this uh it's not like an amazing hand but we have a nice two into three into four uh, which is pretty great. And then, of course, Titan of Industry. You have to think, too, a lot of this deck is focused solely on itself. It's not a goldfish deck in the sense that it has zero interaction, but it is relatively low in interaction. And so most of the time, we are just going to be playing stuff, hopefully on or above curve. Um, and that's kind of it. Like, that's the focus of the deck. So we don't need to push too hard to find interactive pieces because they're 
they're few and far between in this deck. Uh, the only thing we really have are the Sky Turtles and the Fading Hopes, which are really good, but obviously not like plan A of the deck, if that makes sense. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. I'm very curious to see what they have. Looks like a remove, like Esper Control-ish. Ooh, I like that. Um, hmm. I think I'll play the Topiary Stomper. If they kill it, they kill it. But I think the more important thing is we, uh, we get the land here because that opens up the Cultivator next turn. And we, we could have Field Tripped, which is also a very reasonable play. Potentially a better play because sometimes these uh, Esper decks do run like duresses, things like that. Uh, and so there is some value to trying to get that down, but I'm actually kind of okay with this anyway. Um, here though, <laughs> here though, I think I will do the field trip play first uh, and then have that cultivator play as potential backup later. Uh, I think we'll just take an environmental sciences here. Obviously we can't attack with this, so them killing this now is like kind of fine if they do. Looks like they're not willing to. They could very easily have a wandering emperor coming down at some point, which is not great, but okay. Interesting. All right, so we're gonna kind of red herring them a little bit, I think. Uh, and the way we're gonna do that is by throwing this out there one, two, three, four. Yeah, so then we get to do this. Uh, I would love to take that action. Thank you so much. We'll throw that land down, and then we do get the attack in here. Um, so now it's kind of up to them if they want to block or not. If they block, chances are they're going to sweep, but it looks like they're not going to. They obviously are going to get to drain some life. This is a really annoying card, one that we're going to want to try and deal with. Um, but the reality is we can attack in and then start on that plan that I talked about in the deck tech, which was Cyclone Summoner into Undercover Operative, uh, which just bounces repeatedly everything, <laughs> uh, which is very annoying for the opponent. Sure. Um, so chances are they are just gonna, no, they're just gonna throw the 1-1 one -one down. Cool. Uh, might be a bit of a like, not desperation play, but just as a blocker. Um, they're not in danger of dying yet, but it's just one of those situations where they might just need a blocker, so that could very well be the reason they're doing this. Okay, um, I think the play is pretty clear. I think we just attack in. I will attack with both, uh, despite them potentially being able to kill the cultivator if they double block it. Um, that's fine by me, I don't really care. Uh, they could kill the Topiary Stomper, to be fair, but... Okay, so they're gonna do that. That's fine. Again, I don't particularly care. I just want to get as much damage in as I can. And it looks like they're not gonna block. That's actually really fascinating. Um, so now we just get to bounce everything. Worth noting, this is obviously... That was phased out at the time, so that does stay onto the battlefield. But now, if they can't deal with the Cyclone Summoner, we've got Undercover Operative that's going to start bouncing stuff every turn. They're probably going to spend their turn killing it, yeah. Uh, which is kind of fine, <laughs> again, uh, because we will have the Titan of Industry as backup options here. So, again, I'm not super concerned about that. Um, this is a good game, though. I do really like this. Sure. Fantastic. Great play for sure. They do draw and discard a card, which does hit us for one. Uh, worth noting, they're willing to, to take a hit to their life total because they're able to drain life with this. So that is just something to consider for us that they might be a little bit more flippant with their life total than some other decks would be. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. All right. Um, I mean, I think it's just Titan of Industry. We're gonna shield counter it up and we're going to Rhino shield counter here um we could have gained five there as well but i think we just need to threaten them as best we can to to finish this game as quickly as possible the fact that they just get to continuously draw cards is not something i'm super stoked about so we just have to like try and finish the game quickly the fact that the titan does have trample is very relevant um just because it's gonna allow us to hopefully get through a couple points of damage at the very least 
Um, so they're not planning on attacking this turn, which obviously, <laughs> uh, which does mean they probably aren't going to kill the Titan this turn either. Um, unless they had drawn something there, which they might have, I don't know, but that certainly bodes well for us. Uh, so I will take it. Hmm. <laughs> Do we test the waters? Uh, yeah, you know what? I think I will. I'm going to force the issue a little bit here just to see if this forces any kind of play from them. Looks like no. I will happily go undercover operative on the Titan. I'm doing this now. Are they good gaming us already? Wow. Yes. Okay. We did it. Well, guys, I know we only got two games here. We did go a little long. I tried to keep it under 30 minutes. So let's go ahead. Let's go into the wrap up and talk about this deck. We did technically go undefeated which was pretty cool. All right, guys, so Civic Ramp, again, created by the amazing MTG Malone. If you don't know who that is, please check out his stuff down below. I will link him uh, and tag him. He's a phenomenal content creator and really enjoyable to watch. So MTG Malone, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, this is a blast of a deck, uh, absolutely fun. Uh, do I think it's tier one? Probably not, truthfully, uh, but I will say, um, it handled itself very well. Uh, now, keeping in mind, we're only at gold now tier one. Uh, and so we're gonna see a different variety of decks than someone who's trying to make mythic. So if you're trying to be competitive, I, I am not saying this deck is competitive. I'm just saying it's a fun deck. Uh, did we go undefeated? Sure. Did we only play two games? Absolutely. So keep that in mind. If you try this deck and you don't have as great a luck, it's okay. We're showing you exactly what happens as we record it. So. I don't know what to tell you, but uh, this was a really fun one. I enjoyed this deck a lot. I think Simic Ramp is in a really good place right now with a lot of really good pieces. Some of those pieces will certainly be rotating out fairly soon, but I think there are mostly good cards that you'll be able to keep into the deck, and hopefully we can keep it going forward uh, after rotation and all that stuff. So all in all, a blast of a deck. Thank you so much, MTG Malone. I do appreciate it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to enter the giveaway, subscribe, and I will see you very soon for another gameplay video.